Hey, I had that same monitor in 2005. <laughs> All right, I guess some of you guys don't like my old monitor, and that's okay, because today we're gonna fix that problem with a gaming monitor that I picked up for under $200. And I'm gonna tell you what I thought about it. Stay tuned. Do you like saving money? Of course you do. You need to check out today's sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals has a free browser extension available to make saving money online even easier. When you're on a website, just click on the browser extension and it shows you all the deals available for that website. This browser extension will automatically search through all of the most up-to-date coupon codes to find you the best savings based on what you currently have in your cart. Check out this deal I found on Foster & Grant glasses. I love these glasses, but end up breaking a pair at least once a year. Maybe I should buy two. So, follow the link in the description below and get the free Slick Deals browser extension and start saving money today. Unless you don't like saving money. Hey, 2005 called and want their monitor back. I've had numerous people in the comments making fun of my ancient monitor. And you know what? I get it. I've got this amazing gaming system here that we built on this channel attached to the worst monitor ever. Unfortunately, I'm not a big channel that gets hardware for free. Everything for this system came out of pocket. And I built this studio right here to improve my video quality. This stuff all costs money. And my monitor kind of got the short end of the stick. But that's changing today. So when I set out to upgrade this monitor, I had some limitations. A big one was price. I had a budget of $200. And with that budget, I wanted to get a high refresh rate of at least 120 hertz. It had to be a good viewing angle so that it would look good on video. Remember, you guys are always seeing this monitor at an angle and I wanted it to show up good. It had to be 24 inches and I also wanted to go with a 1080p display because not only was this system originally designed around 1080p gaming, but also I do a lot of screen capture and tutorials and whatnot, and logistically, 1080 just works better for that. TN panels are usually the most affordable considering my low budget, but that just wasn't gonna work because they don't have a good viewing angle. So from the very beginning, I was looking for at least a VA panel because they have good viewing angles and there are many VA panels within my budget. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think there was any way I was gonna be able to afford an IPS display because typically they're pretty expensive. That was, of course, until I found the AOC 24G2 that we're looking at today. The AOC 24G2 is a 1080p, 144 hertz display that supports adaptive sync and it's an IPS panel. These are great specs, but it has to cost over 350, right? Actually, it doesn't. I picked this monitor up for 180 bucks. Once I saw the price of this display, I watched numerous reviews just waiting for some glaring problem to explain the low price, but everyone loved it. It's got really good reviews. It also fits all of my criteria while coming in a little bit below budget. Now, one of the trade-offs that you're gonna make by going with an IPS display is contrast ratio. This monitor has a contrast ratio of 1500 to one. Most VA panels have a contrast ratio of 5000 to one. So you're not gonna get those really deep blacks that you would from a VA panel. But the trade-off, of course, is really vibrant colors. And you know what? I can vouch for that. The color on this monitor is amazing. From the second I turned it on, it blew me away. But then again, I'm comparing it to a monitor that was made around 2005. This monitor wasn't great based on 2005 standards. With all that said, let's hook this AOC up and we'll go over some of the specs on this monitor. One of the ways cheaper monitors save money is through build quality. They come with cheaper stands and worse bezels, but that's not the case with this monitor. While the stand is made out of plastic, it's fully adjustable. It comes with height adjustment and swivel, as well as a tilt adjustment. This stand even supports pivoting around if you wanna use this monitor in portrait mode. 
But if you decide the stand doesn't work for you, it's also VESA compatible, so you can buy any aftermarket mount you want for it. The mount also has a convenient hole in the back to route your cables. This will help clean up the cable mess hanging out the back of your monitor. This monitor also has practically no bezel, giving you a sleek modern look. For inputs, this display comes with two HDMI ports, one display port, and a VGA port, if you're wanting to use it with legacy hardware. Unfortunately, the one that I purchased didn't come with a USB hub, which would have came in really handy since I typically run my wireless dongle on an extension cord behind the display. However, there is a model that has a USB hub. Don't hold me to this, but I believe the 24G2U is the one that comes with a USB hub. But at the time I bought this, I couldn't find one available anywhere. So that one may not be available anymore. This monitor does, however, come with an audio output that gets its audio through the HDMI or DisplayPort, which would be a nice way to connect your earphones or speakers if your computer isn't right next to your monitor. The adaptive sync in this monitor works really well. You should be able to use it with AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync. I have an NVIDIA card and I was able to use it with G-Sync by simply enabling it in the NVIDIA control panel. I didn't experience any screen flickering or frame tearing at all. This monitor comes with weak, medium, and strong overdrive modes. I received this monitor a week before I filmed this video, and I spent a lot of time playing games with preparation for the video itself. I didn't even realize that overdrive was turned off until the day before I sat down to compile my notes for this video. I was impressed with this monitor's performance without overdrive. With overdrive turned on, it was spectacular. I set overdrive to strong, and I didn't have any issues at all. However, based on several reviews that I watched on this monitor, it's suggested that you leave overdrive to medium if you expect to play games under 100 FPS. Setting overdrive to strong could produce artifacting under 100 FPS. Now that we've gone over the good things about this monitor, I wanted to cover some of the negatives that I found. But first, if this video is helpful to you, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now, the bad really isn't that bad. First off, this monitor is not HDR compatible, but did you really expect it to be at $180? It does come with an HDR effect in the OSD, but essentially all it does is turn the sharpening up and doesn't really look that great. I would honestly recommend leaving it off. Speaking of the OSD, this is actually my biggest dislike on this monitor. You access the OSD through buttons underneath the bottom bezel. However, the buttons are not very raised and they're just barely offset to the left of the image, making them really hard and difficult to find. If that wasn't bad enough, most of the time that I was going through the OSD, it would time out while I was trying to find the stupid button that I wanted to push. It was quite annoying. However, you can change the OSD timeout to help solve that problem. Also, honestly, I'm not really sold on the aesthetic. The red accents really don't go with the look that I've been going with, and I'd prefer if the monitor was just all black. Luckily, aside from just the bottom bezel, you really can't see any of the other accents with the setup that I have. Finally, the only real major issue that I ran into with this monitor was at first boot, I didn't have any audio. If you have this issue, check which audio device you're using by clicking on your volume control. If it says HDMI audio, then right click on the volume icon. Then from the settings, choose manage sound devices, find your HDMI audio and push the disable button. Until I disabled HDMI audio, every time I booted the system up, HDMI audio would be the default audio device. With all that said, all in all, I highly recommend this monitor. The gameplay is buttery smooth and the colors are just absolutely amazing. I don't know how I lived without a high refresh rate monitor connected to this system for so long. And at $180, I've actually thought about getting some of these monitors for my tech bench because honestly, the picture on this monitor is so good that it would even work good on a system without a great GPU. In fact, if you don't have a great GPU and you would like to know ways to increase your frame rates for free, check out this video that I go over the basics of optimizing your game settings for higher frame rates. Sometimes you can speed up your games without affecting visual quality at all. And if you wanna know how to do it, just check out this video here. 
Have a great day.